Well, a very good day to everyone. Thank you for joining us once again for another great sit-down session with Follow the Money Investor Group. We have the great pleasure of welcoming back Jim Grieg, who is the president of Benchmark Metals. Jim, thanks for joining us today. Good. Thanks for Mark uh, for having us on board again. Happy to. Uh, we're always uh, thrilled to get uh, good news from inside a company. I know uh, this has been a, a busy time for you folks. I understand we have some new drilling results and expansion to talk about with our audience today. That's right. Yeah, we've uh, commenced uh, drilling at our project in north central British Columbia. And we're looking to expand upon new gold and silver targets uh, in addition to expansion drilling to really extremely grow our resource estimate. Good news indeed. And so tell me when this moment happens in a company's evolution, what's 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 the key uh, shift that's happening when, when news like this comes out? What's happening for the company? Well, we put out a near 3 million ounce resource estimate just over a month ago. And this has changed us really from an exploration um, discovery type scenario to truly a development company that is progressing towards a gold and silver mine. Mm -hmm. So once the resource is published, then all of your further drilling goes towards expanding and defining the deposit, but also progressing with engineering to show that you do have a mine. Great to hear that, thank you. And for those that have been watching the company from an investing perspective, uh, it's an energy change. There's obviously evolution and, and a gear change happening for the company. So what, as an investor, what should we be watching for as the company moves forward in this new way? What are sort of the key uh, couple of dates and, and turning points for the company at this point? So the key, excuse me, key milestones now um, are that we move towards um, two factors, really. The, the first is that we have a major drill program in progress this will go towards expanding the current resource, but also looking towards new discoveries across this big land package. But all of that data that uh, comes from the drilling and work on the ground feeds into a preliminary economic assessment. Mm -hmm. And this PEA shows that this is an economic de deposit uh, and that it can be built within a certain um, size of uh, capital. Mm -hmm. uh, but also presents the rewards, um, the capital investment and the return you get for that. Mm -hmm. And we expect in the PEA coming out in the third quarter of this year to be very robust and um, show that the capital returns are quite excessive mm -hmm. and it should lend itself here to being um, Canada's next largest gold silver mine. We truly believe we have an exceptional project going forward. Great to hear that, thank you. And just a, a general curiosity question for those watching today, uh, how long has the company been, been waiting for this? It's a lot of work that's put in behind the scenes and, and this has been uh, how long coming? So we started work on this project in 2018 and it's now 2021. So roughly four years later, we progressed very quickly from renewing an old forgotten about story to getting to a point where um, there's a decision to be made to put shovels in the ground and actually build a mine. Mm -hmm. So it's been a very quick, aggressive program over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we anticipate that um, after the PEA this year, there'll be an updated resource in early 2022. And that will be followed by a feasibility study in 2022. So we're roughly um, 12 months away from a mining decision and um, a movement towards building a mine. So this is very aggressive with good success um, in addition to a $30 million treasury, which allows us to do all of the work. So it's um, a unique story um, that uh, hasn't been fully recognized as yet. And that's the opportunity for the investors right now. They should be looking at seriously investing in benchmark because there's a lot of progress and rewards to be made on the share price. I appreciate that very much. And you talked about the treasury, Jim. Let's talk a little bit about the health of the company in the finance realm, just the positioning and, and the work you've done to get to where you are today. Sure, so at the moment in the treasury, there's roughly $30 million. Uh, but late last year, we completed a $52 million raise that involved the likes of Eric Sprott 
and several large institutions. And these institutions generally don't support a project unless they are well progressed on the path to the permit or if they have an exceptional early stage story. And we actually had both of those. Um, so we have institutions that support mining endeavors and they will continue to support us as we go forward. So at this point, I think it's fair to say capital is not an issue for the company. Um, it's a matter of putting the results out and getting to these milestones as quickly as possible. Appreciate that. Uh, and looking back a short bit, Jim, and then looking ahead when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic, how the industry, the sector has been impacted. This is a gear change for the company right now into a different energy mode. Um, how have things been affected with the pandemic? Where are we now? I know we're up in Northern BC. Just give our audience a little bit of a, an interest uh, or an insight rather into in where things are at. So we, we've um, had no COVID issues period um, last year or this year to date. Uh, we did institute some very severe measures um, in terms of quarantining people before they enter site. And then once they're at the project, uh, it's basically a closed loop. Uh, we still wear masks at site, but we don't allow any external visitors. And as we progress here, almost post COVID period, um, most if not all of the workers at site have had their first and second COVID shots, um, but we're also doing um, testing here prior to getting sites just to, to receive some negative tests. So uh, we're quite stringent and we follow British Columbia and federal government standards. Thank you for that. Uh, and looking at where the company is with this turning point in terms of the opportunity for investment, I'm curious your thoughts when it comes to the team at Benchmark Metals. If there's an energy shift in this way, we're moving from exploration with potentially getting, uh, as you say, shovels into the ground. What happens to the team? And can you talk a bit about some of the players that you're working with? Yeah, so the, the team's quite experienced. Um, you know, I, I didn't lose my hair yesterday. It took a good 20 years to lose all of my hair. And so this all happened during uh, work in the mining sector. So the reality is um, all of our senior team, be it on the board or management, uh, have been involved in new discoveries, but they've also been involved in building mines and working in production. So we have quite a large scope and scale between all of the figures running the company. And we are indeed prepared to put a mine in production. And, but at the same time, because we are growing and there's a new energy to the company, we're also adding experienced personnel to help with this heavy lifting. Okay, great to know that. Are there partnerships or alliances that uh, the audience uh, should hear about when it comes to the next move for the company, uh, either through contracts or, or uh, services? You know, it's, it's quite a gear change. I'm curious what that does in terms of the dynamic of the company relationships. Yeah, I think the most important partnership at this point is with our First Nations partners. Uh, we have signed agreements with four First Nations and they are indeed uh, motivated for responsible resource development. Mm -hmm. And through the permitting path over the next two years, as we progress towards mining, uh, we need social license from the First Nations. And at this point, um, we are utilizing First Nations for their technical capacity because they are um, quite strong uh, doing baseline work and um, helping with progression along the permitting path. So we're usually utilizing the partners for opportunities to help build and grow the project. But in addition, we keep them informed of the path and uh, updates um, because um, at some point we need their sign off on a mining permit. And so we're quite close and it's a very amicable and professional relationship. And it, it, this is key, this is very important. And uh, I think um, all groups are, are quite um, happy with the success to date and the potential to cr create some real generational type jobs in this jurisdiction. I appreciate that. You know, it's always great to get an inside voice from the, the company and to share with an audience the, the key decision points, what's happening with updates. You know, when you drive home at the end of the day, Jim, what, what, what's on your mind? What are you thinking over? Obviously, there's a lot of moving parts right now, but 
But uh, just give us a bit of an overview, if you will, in your role at the company of, of, of what, what you think about as the day winds down and, and, and key moments that we're to watch for. I think that the key moments here are the major milestones we have. We have a minimum of 100,000 meters of drilling that we've started. Um, this will produce a new updated resource estimate. Um, but all of this data, this drilling, the work on the ground is essential to get towards our studies and our economics that show that this is a real mining endeavor. And so, you know, I guess the, the major thought here is timelines. Um, you have schedules and, and dates that you wanna meet and uh, there's a lot of moving parts. So uh, organizing all the people and getting feedback, it, it's all about deadlines at the moment and completing these deadlines on time. Appreciate that. If I can ask just for a, a summary from your perspective as well, Jim, for the investors watching that, you know, when it comes to considering an investment in benchmark metals and where you are as an entity right now, what are the sort of the top two or three components that you would uh, ask investors to consider when it comes to looking at the company for investment? I think first and foremost is this is a gold and silver project. Mm -hmm. And with the rate of inflation that is increasing and the amount of debt in the world, Gold and silver ultimately become a place to store value, store money. And I don't think we have seen the true movement in gold and silver yet. I think there's a few good years where these physical share prices or physical gold prices will elevate much higher. And that is a very good reason to be investing in benchmark. Secondly, benchmarks located in an exceptionally good jurisdiction we're in a proven and prolific area of North Central British Columbia, Canada. Right. We're road accessible. Uh, we've created partnerships with First Nations. You know, there's some big um, check marks of the box there to realize that, um, you know, we're not working in the uh, difficult jurisdiction. It's all about putting a mine in production where it can be done. Uh, and if there was a third um, check mark, I suppose, it's the fact that we have. $30 million in the treasury to support all of 2021's work. I appreciate that. A very healthy situation to say the least. Jim, it's always a pleasure to have you uh, in our sessions. I know the audience appreciates uh, the inside view. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share today before we wrap up? No, I think, um, look, there'll be a lot more news coming out of Benchmark um, almost on a seven to 10 day period. Okay. Uh, the drill rigs are turning and I would anticipate uh, the first set of drill results to come out early August. It's tough, not that it's just right around the corner. I appreciate that, Jim. You're always uh, wonderful to have as a guest, uh, very upfront and open with what's happening at the company. I appreciate that. And uh, you can uh, be guaranteed uh, a lot of us will be watching what's happening with the company in the coming weeks. Very good. Thanks, Mark. We'll speak to you soon. All the best. Thanks for your time.